pretty much half of the world's population will experience what we'll call incredible pain in the abdominal pelvic region. And this pain occurs on a fairly consistent basis, like close to every month. And yes, we are talking about period or menstrual cramps. Now, because only half of the world's population, females, experience menstrual cramps, there have been attempts to try to simulate menstrual cramps in males. Maybe you've seen some of those YouTube videos where they hook up men to these TENS units that stimulate muscle contractions, and then they activate the unit, and the men start writhing in pain. Now, as nice of a sentiment as this is to try to empathize with females, this is not the same thing. Menstrual cramps are a different type of pain, and so you can't truly simulate this in males. So today, we're going to explain why this is by discussing what is actually happening during menstrual cramps, why they occur, and again, why it's a different type of pain. It's going to be a crampy one. So let's do this. Now let's quickly address the elephant in the room here. My XY chromosomes made it so I did not come with the necessary equipment for menstrual cramps. So I've obviously never experienced them before. However, I have been teaching female anatomy and physiology for about the last 17 years, which also means I'm kind of getting old here, but I've had some awesome classes and discussions with many female students on this topic. So hopefully you can give me a chance to describe the anatomy and physiology here, because we are going to see some really cool anatomical structures on the cadaver dissection, such as the uterus, ovaries, and other female reproductive structures that are involved in this story. So with that being said, menstrual cramps are part of the female reproductive cycle. Now most people don't refer to it as the female reproductive cycle. Most will say monthly periods, monthly cycle, or menstrual cycle. But the commonality between all those different names is the idea of a cycle, something that tends to repeat itself once every month or so. And I say month or so because there is an average range for the female reproductive cycle, which averages to about once every 24 to 35 days, depending on the female. But most physiology texts teach it as once every 28 days, so we'll use that number as our framework. Day one of the cycle is actually considered the first day of menstrual bleeding, which is when these menstrual cramps occur. And if we look at the cadaver dissection, we can get a very clear idea about what is going on here. Here we have a mid-sagittal cut through the female pelvis, which is a cut like so through the midline. And here we have the vaginal canal, the uterus, the uterine tube, and we have the ovary, which is about the size of an almond. But we want to come back to the uterus. This specific largest portion of the uterus that I'm touching with the probe is referred to as the myometrium. My means muscle, and this specifically is made out of smooth muscle, and smooth muscle is under involuntary control, unlike skeletal muscle, which is under voluntary control. But the uterus is actually the largest smooth muscle mass in the human body. But if I were to move to the inside of the uterus here, where my probe is touching, this is now touching the inside lining, which is referred to as the endometrium. The endometrium is a glandular and highly vascular tissue, meaning it has a lot of blood going to it. And this is what actually sloughs off this endometrium. It'll slough off, move down and out the vaginal canal, and this is what is responsible for the bleeding that females experience during their periods. And if you look at this graph, this is showing you how the endometrial lining of the uterus gets thinner during menstruation because it's literally sloughing off. And then you can see that it starts to get thicker as the cycle continues. And I'll mention what's going on there when we answer why period cramps occur in the first place. But before we talk more about sloughing or shedding of the endometrium, let's talk about shedding some of the plaque from our teeth by saying thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Boca. Boca is an incredible toothpaste that is non-toxic and dentist approved. Boca is also fluoride free, and although fluoride is safe to use and a tried and true ingredient, Boca provides consumers with a fluoride free alternative. Instead, Boca uses nanohydroxyapatite, which makes it the primary foundation of teeth and bones, which means it's supportive for your overall tooth and enamel health. There are also no artificial flavors, as these flavors are sourced from real ingredients that you'll find in nature, like lemon, lavender, mint, or ginger. And while I have definitely loved trying the multiple flavor options, Boca has also been a really good choice for me as it's great for sensitive teeth. So right now, you can use the link in my description below and use the code 15INSTITUTE for 15% off your Boca Amazon order or on their website. 
and my code 15 Institute will stack on top of the already discounted Boca 3 pack of toothpaste on Amazon. That's up to 25% off with my code. Their best selling toothpaste are always selling out, so be sure to stock up on Boca soon. And now, let's get back to those menstrual cramps. If someone is experiencing menstrual cramping, that means that during the previous month or the previous cycle, pregnancy did not occur. And here we have a chart representing this. This is representing the whole 28 day cycle. And the first three to five days is again when menstrual cramping is occurring and the endometrium is sloughing off. But then you can see estrogen levels start to build up to about day 14. And day 14 is significant because this is representing ovulation when the egg is released and this is potentially when pregnancy can occur. And as a fun little FYI, estrogen has many powerful effects. But one thing it does is influence sex drive or libido. So it might make sense to increase a female sex drive prior to when she could become pregnant. This increased estrogen might influence the female to overlook some of the inadequacies of her mate. She might be more likely to overlook his emotional stupidity, or maybe he forgot to do the dishes. So as you can see, this is very important from a physiological and evolutionary perspective because we may not have been able to continue the species without an extra boost in libido. So thank you estrogen. But what we are seeing on the other half of the cycle is a dramatic increase in progesterone. And what this does is stimulates endometrial growth, or in other words, thickens the inside lining of the uterus or that endometrium to prepare it for a fertilized egg. However, if an egg does not get fertilized and pregnancy does not occur, you can see that the estrogen and progesterone levels decline dramatically. And this can affect how someone is feeling and influence their mood. And this sharp decline in hormone levels is what explains premenstrual syndrome, but it also triggers the release of certain chemicals called prostaglandins, which you're now gonna find triggers day one of the next cycle, menstrual cramping. Prostaglandins do a couple of things. One, they cause vasoconstriction of the blood vessels going to the uterus. If you vasoconstrict blood vessels going to the inside lining of the uterus, those endometrial cells will get a diminished blood supply and they will start to die off and this is what results in the flaking or the sloughing off of the endometrium of the uterus that occurs during the period. Another thing prostaglandins do, which is not so fun, is stimulate the smooth muscle contractions of the uterus, which we can see going back to this cadaver dissection, all of this smooth muscle in the uterus is now being stimulated and it's gonna squeeze and contract, which helps to propel and slough those cells outside of the body, but it also causes pain. And as an FYI, ibuprofen is a medication that inhibits prostaglandins, and this is why it can sometimes help with menstrual cramping. Now, coming back to the idea that you cannot simulate menstrual cramping pain in men. Now, the most obvious reason for this is that they just don't have a uterus. But even if you put those TENS units on a female, they would also tell you that the pain caused by those TENS units is different than the pain from menstrual cramping. And here's why. The electrodes are placed on the surface of the body, and when activated to a certain level, will cause pain in the skeletal muscles. However, the type of pain from skeletal muscles is called somatic pain. Somatic pain is what occurs in structures that are closer to the surface of the body, such as pain felt in the skin, muscles, tendons, ligaments, and joints. Somatic pain is also more pinpoint and less diffuse, meaning you can pretty much tell exactly where it's coming from. So like if I pinched my skin, that's a somatic pain that I would feel if I pinched hard enough and I'd know exactly where it was coming from. But the uterus being a deeper internal organ runs through visceral pain pathways. And visceral just means pertaining to internal organs. But visceral pain is more diffuse, not quite as pinpoint accurate, meaning that it can often refer to other regions. And that is sometimes why people having a heart attack, for example, yes, they have chest pain, but the pain can also refer to the jaw, the arm, and even people experiencing menstrual cramping, yes, they will have pain in that lower abdominal pelvic region, but can also refer to the back, hips, and even the thighs. I also wanna clarify that even though visceral pain is more diffuse, it doesn't mean that it can't be quite intense at times. Like anyone that has experienced visceral pain from appendicitis knows that that can be quite painful. And obviously visceral pain from menstrual cramping can also be quite painful. So I guess that means the best males can do is sympathize rather than truly empathize with females when it comes to menstrual cramping. But hopefully that helped everyone to learn some useful information about menstrual cramping and the female reproductive cycle. 
Thank you for supporting the channel. And if you are currently experiencing menstrual cramps right now, I wish you and your uterus a speedy recovery.